Yo, welcome, Frony. So the early access have been live now for a couple of days. We have managed to get our hands on the first data. We have started to figure out what the meta is going to be. And if you are about to start the server, you have not made up your combination. I will now drop the weapon tier list for the global release. Since there's so many comps overall, this tier list will not have like all the comps and rate all of them. I have made it so you have the best comps for every playstyle. So you have the best tank comps, the best damage comps, the best healer comps, all of that in this guide right here. We are starting out with the tanks, where the most popular one is SNS Great Sword, a tank class that has not only great tanking ability, but also a lot of CC, mobility, and even a decent amount of damage. In PvP, this is the tank that most players prefer to have in their dungeon team. But also in PvP, this comp is performing really well in small and large scale PvP. Second up, we have the so-called Paladin tank. This one is wearing SNS and Wand, and is using the healing abilities from the Wand to get an even bigger sustain. Those tanky monsters are even hard to kill in large scale PvP if you attack them with multiple players. While the CC setup the one provides is extremely valuable in PvP to a team, the lack of damage makes this tank only suboptimal in PvE dungeons. Now let's draw our attention to the second part of the Holy Trinity, the healers. Here we do have the Bow Wand as our number one contender. It has the highest heals and can not only remove CC from your mates, but also apply the biggest large scale CC in the game that can actually disrupt whole guilds. Healers are no matter what build a core of RV, PvP and PvE lineup, you will not have any issues finding teams. Where you will also have no issue finding something is at our sponsor, Rogue Energy. Because we all know I have a couple of kilos too much and Rogue Energy is an energy drink with only five calories per serving. And if you're going for the hydration one, it's even at zero calories. So it's my energy of choice. You can check it out in the link in the description. And if you use code PONY, you will even get 10% off your next order. If you are looking for a healer that can also do some AOE damage, then Staff Wand is your choice. The Mage playstyle is also giving you access to better mana sustain and additional CC. This is in Throne and Liberty a lot more important as you might think, because you cannot buy like 1000 mana potions and just keep chugging them. You will actually need to gear and build your class properly. Now we will enter the territory for the guys that like to see the big numbers. The uncontested highest PvE damage output you will be able to achieve with the crossbow dagger combination. In PvP though, the class is having some problems in large scale events, but does just fine in small scale PvP. The best melee DPS combo is the Greatsword Dagger, an assassin style burst class that is using stealth paired with lots of mobility skills to approach targets and then locks them down with stuns and some of the hardest hit hitting burst skills. Similar to crossbow dagger, it is better in smaller scale PvP than it is in mass PvP. Now let's go to the highest DPS range class that consists of staff and bow. And this build is surprisingly able to shoot at the speed of a machine gun while sustaining the mana. It also has burst potential and can be played well in PvE as well as in mass PvP. In small scale PvP, this build struggles a bit due to not having enough mobility and tankiness. If you, for example, do not like one of those weapons and you want to add more mobility and stealth, then it's also perfectly viable to equip a dagger as a second hand and be a sneaky mage assassin with staff dagger or go real ranger style with bow dagger and that's probably the best class to kill steel in mass pvp if you still have any questions just drop it in the comments as always i will answer everything in less than 24 hours cheers guys